Hello, I'm Tony from Bonner's Music in uh, Eastbourne and we've now got a new showroom in Rygate which is just off the M25 so um, we believe we're the best place in the UK where you can buy your keyboard from because you can compare all the major brands under one roof. So um, today we're looking at the Roland FP90. Um, if you come to one of our stores you'll be able to compare this to um, other models at a similar price point so you could be comparing this with the Kawai ES8 um, and also the Yamaha P255. Um, so the FP90 is um, a breed of keyboard that we would call a portable piano and that means that it's got um, 88 keys that are weighted um, so they feel like a piano to play but it also has speakers built into it as well so um, this kind of instrument is great if you need a piano that you can move around whether you're going to move it around the house or if you're going to take it to a, a rehearsal for a choir or a church group um, or any anywhere where you need to be able to move move your piano around but have a good powerful sound from the inbuilt speakers um, now you can buy a portable piano for three or four hundred pounds but um, this is really at the top end of the portable piano market and this is for someone who really wants the very very best that you can get um, it uses technology from Roland's uh, top of the range uh, home digital pianos which um, uh, are the likes of the HP 605 or the LX7 and LX17 models um, so it's got a very very good piano sound as you'll hear in a minute um, but it shares a lot of technology with their top end products um, and I must say actually it is presented in a really nice package um, if we just look at the control panel to start off with um, we'll start over here on the left hand side so at the far left you've got the on off switch um, and a nice volume control there but next to that I like this this is the equalizer section so this is unusual to find on a on a portable piano um, as opposed to a stage piano now um, let's just talk about what a stage piano is compared to a portable piano um, a portable piano has speakers built in whereas a stage piano um, like the Roland RD800 or Yamaha CP4 um, they don't have speakers built in um, and they tend to have functions which um, only professional players on stage would want however the FP90 seems to bridge that gap really because you've got um, these equalizer controls here which enable you to tailor the the brightness or the tone of the sound to your own tastes or to the room or the environment that you're playing in so we'll come to that in a minute you've got an ambience control which is um, uh, otherwise known as reverb so it adds a, a bit of ambience or sort of uh, makes you can make you sound like you're playing in a concert hall or a school hall um, rather than just in a very dry small room um, you've then got two sliders here and I think these are really good because if you layer two voices together you've got these um, two sliders one is assigned to each sound so if you layer a piano sound and a string sound together you've got independent control over both both sounds one slider for the piano one for the strings which is great um, two buttons here you've got the split dual button this is enables you to split the keyboard or layer two sounds transpose which is a very useful feature to have and especially on its own button without having to go through a menu to to get to the transpose feature um, different sound categories we've got uh, acoustic pianos electric pianos string sounds um, organs there are Hammond jazz organs as well as classical pipe organs in there uh, pad sounds which are um, nice warm sort of ambient sounds to, to layer with other voices which we'll show in a second and then you've got the other button and this contains I think about 270 odd other sounds um, which could be synthesizer sounds, drum kits, uh, brass sounds, saxophones, strings, choirs, all sorts of other voices which you can use um, to layer with other sounds or in your own compositions using the recording feature. Um, got a couple of cursor buttons here. Nice screen, I must say. It's nice and bright, backlit display. You'll see there's a little Bluetooth um, sign there. That means that the uh, the Bluetooth is enabled on the piano. Um, and I must say, this is one of the first portable pianos I've seen with proper Bluetooth connectivity. Um, you can either stream music into this piano and it will come out of the speakers here so from your mp3 player or your mobile phone or tablet um, but also the bluetooth is um, bluetooth midi and what that means is that you could connect this to your tablet computer and the 
keyboard will communicate with it uh, without needing any cables so you can use it to follow uh, music on your tablet um, and you can even use the pedals um, to automatically flip the pages on your favorite score software on your um, on your tablet so uh, the Bluetooth on this is right up to date and right at the cutting edge of Bluetooth technology found within uh, keyboard instruments um, as we move along here you've got a function button which enables you to get to all the extra functions that are stored behind the menus in the piano um, you've got your metronome controls here song controls at the end there's a song volume control as well it's got its own dedicated slider um, and there's a mic uh, control mic volume control with a mic input button which you can turn the mic input on or off so all in all it's a very very intuitive um, panel layer I think um, so I'm going to stop talking for a bit and I'm just going to play you some uh, tunes using the uh, the acoustic piano sound to start off with um, so let's just start with something uh, quite mellow so So you can see it's a very versatile piano sound, um, good for lots of different uh, styles of music. Um, but what I'm going to just show you or draw your attention to now is the equaliser section over here on the left. So if you just listen carefully, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this all, all the controls in the middle. So this is what we call a completely flat um, equaliser. So if I just play some chords, so... Now let's imagine I was going to play some classical music and I want to bring the sound down a little bit more mellow, maybe like a, a Bosendorf sort of piano sound. Then if I just bring the high down a little bit and I'll boost the low a little bit as well and the middle just a tad, then I've got a different kind of tone to the piano sound. So. So we're going to play something a little bit more contemporary then what I would tend to do is I'll bring the high EQ up a bit a little bit down on the middle and also I'm going to bring the low down a bit as well so down the bottom end it's lost some of the bass end but um, it's, it's a more contemporary piano sound so you get something like So using the equaliser, we're still only using the first piano sound, which is the concert piano sound. You can get a lot of variation in, in the tone of the piano. I was going to set those back to normal now just to show you some of the other sounds that are built into the piano. You've got a whole range of different piano sounds that are preset here for you. You've um, got an upright piano. So you can hear down the bottom end there how that it's not just a, a the concert grand piano sort of slightly detuned it is actually a, a different recording of a proper upright piano so
So there are lots of different um, piano sounds built in. There's a, there's a rock and roll piano, so. Um, and you've got a ragtime piano. so on. There's also a 70s electric grand sound which is actually the sound of a, of a very famous uh, Yamaha piano which was called a CP80 um, back in the 1970s um, and it was it was one of the first electric pianos really it had strings and pickups in it but it gave a, a particularly um, distinctive sound if you like so uh, it was used in a lot of disco tracks. Um. Um, and there's also a nice sound here that I like. The Roland have used on a few of their instruments across the uh, the years. This is called Magical Piano. It's a beautiful sound for ballads. So um, what we can do is we can take any of those sounds. So if I choose the concert grand piano sound and I can layer it with another voice. So if I, for instance, press piano and the pad button together, then I get now two sounds layered on top of each other. I've got the piano and a synthesizer sound on, uh, laid on top of it. So every note is playing two sounds. So if I bring these two part sliders down, let's have a listen, there's just the piano. And on the lower slider is the warm synth pad sound. So I can, using the two sliders, mix and match how I want the, uh, the, the, the two levels of the piano sound and the synth sound to be. So let's bring the synth back the synth off a little bit. So. So the synth sound is just sitting behind the piano and it's ideal for um, just nice romantic songs. So that's using the dual voice function, layering two sounds together. You can also split the keyboard into two, two halves and you can determine where that split point is. So wherever you like, you can have one sound there and one sound here. So if I just press the split button now, um, what I've got here is a bass sound on my left, like a stand up acoustic bass and a piano sound on my right. And again, the sliders allow me to get the volumes right between the two different voices. I've got my piano there so you can so you can have two sounds anywhere you like on the keyboard and you can alter the sound that's on the left hand side so you could have any sound you want there I mean I've got So you can have any sound you want, wherever you want. So I've got here an electric bass sound and maybe on my right hand then I will have um, an elect uh, electric piano sound, press the split button and I've got electric bass.
So it's very versatile. You can put, like I say, any sound in any part of the keyboard, which is great. Um, if we just look through some of the other voices here, um, there's a very good set of um, orchestral string sounds. This is one I like, which is the Epic Strings, which um, is a nice sort of for, for doing um, sort of film soundtracks. <laughs> Now what I can also do, if, um, if we come to the ambience button here, I press that and on the screen I can alter how much ambience or reverb there is. So now we'll play the string sound with even more reverb on it. So, And you can hear the, the, the sound kind of lasts a little bit longer. So. Now whilst we're on the string section, um, something that I like to do is to choose one string sound. So I've got this uh, full strings here. Now if I press the dual voice button, I'm now going to layer the same string sound over it again. So you've actually got the same sound twice on every key. Um, so let's change that. So I've got full strings and full strings are layered on top of each other. But what is nice, it's quite versatile because you can actually change the octave of, of both parts independently. So I've got two string sounds the same, both full strings, but one I've set up an octave. Um, so I'm getting, when I play this note, I'm also getting the octave above play. So it gives you a nice big full orchestral sound. So. So there's a very good, as you're probably getting the idea, there's a very good palette of sounds here for lots of different styles of music. Um, there are some good, um, what I would call Hammond organ sounds or jazz organ sounds. So um, if we choose one of these sounds, you get a... Now what you can do is when you're playing one of the organ sounds, if it's using the uh, rotary speaker effect, then the organ button actually speeds up and slows down the Leslie sound. So. Um... So there's a good range of, of um, organ sounds on here. There's also some very good classical pipe organ sounds. And then we move on to the other button and on this button there are there's over 200 sounds I think it's about 270 sounds and the first one that comes on is a synthesizer sound uh, which is something like this and there's a good range of sounds in here all sorts of sounds Another classic Roland uh, synthesizer sound there. There's so let's talk about the keyboard action on the FP90. This is using Roland's uh, PHA50 keyboard action and it's a mixture of um, synthetic and wood materials so if you just have a look at the keys here you'll see that on the sides of them you can see wood but actually those that's really if you like two wood inserts one on each side of the key the actual core of the key the center piece um, is is made of plastic and synthetic materials so Roland say um, it's 
it, it gives you the uh, longevity of a of the, the synthetic core gives you a longevity of a, of a synthetic piece of material so it should last a very long time whereas the wood gives you the natural feel so it's a nice mixture of the two different uh, materials now I must say it does feel very very nice to play um, it's got these sort of slightly textured key surfaces which is um, what Roland would call an ivory feel um, so this is nicer than I must say than on previous Roland models because to me some of the other older Roland instruments that when they first started using this sort of synthetic ivory material it almost felt a little bit sort of gritty on your fingers it felt a bit strange but these are these are nice and smooth yet they've got a texture so it stops your key your fingers from slipping on the keys um, so very very nice feel to the key action it's the same keyboard action they use in their top of the line uh, digital home pianos um, so they really have put the very best they've got they put their best piano sound in here and their best keyboard action um, so all in all it's a very very nice package I think and a very good um, portable piano to be honest with you probably the best portable piano on the market at the moment um, at the time of making this video um, there are really two products that this is competing with um, which are the Yamaha P255 and the Kawai ES8 um, both of which have been around a little while now certainly more than a year for both of them maybe if not a bit longer um, but um, this this just has a fantastic piano sound and the feel of the keyboard is excellent um, there are a couple of things which are uh, to me are a little bit um, of a concern um, are the, just the physical weight of the piano it really is actually quite heavy um, it's 23.6 kilograms according to Roland specification chart now if you compare that with the Yamaha the P255 uh, which is only 17.6 kilos I think um, and the Kawai model which is um, a couple of kilos less than this this is the heaviest of all three uh, competitive instruments so um, I would suggest that um, if you're going to spend this sort of money or invest this sort of money into an instrument it's well worth playing them first now you can do that at our store we've got two different um, piano showrooms one in Eastbourne on the south coast of the UK um, and one uh, just off the M25 Rygate, M25 motorway at Rygate um, it's just two miles off the M25 so very easy to get to um, both of our stores have a very comprehensive range of stage pianos portable pianos and just digital pianos in general so um, I would always advise you to actually compare different models if you can if you're a player and you already play yourself then it's certainly worth comparing this with the Kawaii S8 and the Yamaha P255 and you can do that in one of our stores. Um, please do give us a call as well because we're very happy to talk about pianos over the telephone and we take part exchange so if you've already got an existing stage piano that you want to upgrade or a portable piano that you want to upgrade uh, give us a call and we'll uh, do our best to uh, take it in part exchange for you give you a decent price for it so you can upgrade to the new FP90 uh, nice and easily. Uh, we offer 0% finance as well so all in all I think this is uh, really is an excellent instrument um, like I say a little bit concerned about the weight uh, my other concern but this is with all portable pianos of this uh, price bracket is that it doesn't have a direct mains connection it uses a mains adapter so um, as a, a sort of professional player myself when I play on stage and, um, and in bands and groups it's nice to have a proper solid mains connection but all manufacturers this is Yamaha, Roland and Kawai they all seem to opt for these very small um, fragile if you like um, uh, mains input connection um, and I just feel that for a portable instrument you should have a proper sort of three pin uh, mains connection like their professional stage pianos do having said that we don't have a choice because all three manufacturers do exactly the same thing so um, it's not just a gripe with Roland that's with all the manufacturers I wish that they would put a proper mains connection on um, but overall an excellent product um, and certainly the best portable piano that I've played um, so please do come to one of our stores um, Bonner's Music either in Eastbourne or Rygate you'll find the contact details in the um, description of this video you'll also find links to um, the various uh, package options that you can buy for the FP90 um, it, it must be said that there are some um, additional extras that Roland make purely for the FP90 they do a nice wooden stand for it so if you're just going to have it at home 
but you want a piano that looks quite modern in your home, then um, buy an FP90 with a wooden stand and the uh, optional three pedal unit. Um, the FP90 can also take uh, Roland's triple pedal unit called the RPU3, uh, which is a portable triple pedal unit, um, and that plugs into the FP90, so it's fully compatible with that. Uh, but we offer lots of different package options um, so that you can get exactly the right bundle of products that's, that's ideal for your need. Um, so give us a call or pop into one of our stores. It's Bonner's Music. Um, we are one of the most comprehensive keyboard stores in the UK, um, and we've got two showrooms, and they're fairly easy to get to. So um, thank you very much for watching my FP90 video and I hope to see you in another one of my uh, piano demo videos. Thanks very much.